Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this video, we're going to walk through how to diagnose inguinal and femoral hernias using your bedside ultrasound. Our probes of choice here are going to be the curvilinear transducer if we need a wider or deeper field of view, or the linear transducer if we want a higher resolution image. Now, with regards to direct versus indirect, we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to diagnose an inguinal hernia and a femoral hernia. Now, the landmarks here are going to be your blood vessels, either the femoral vessels and the inferior pegastrix and the inguinal ligament. I'll talk about those a little bit more. Now, to identify the areas in which hernias will be located, we're going to start off by looking at the femoral vein area, same spot that we look for a DVT here. Right here, we have that femoral vein, and here's that femoral artery. And as we move up and medial, we are going to track the femoral vessel. And this is to find the inferior epigastrics, which are our other landmark. And we're going to track this up until we see some blood vessels shoot off right there. And those are our inferior epigastrics. So the combination of looking for those two vessels, as well as knowing that the inguinal ligament attaches from the aces to the pubic symphysis will give us our landmarks. And this is how I think about where the inguinal versus the femoral hernias are located. And you can just look at this chart and kind of digest it. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank. And we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank, where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. With regards to patient positioning, you can definitely look at the patient in the supine orientation, but if you have the patient stand and Valsalva or a combination of any of these, you are going to increase the likelihood of identifying that hernia. This is an example of an inguinal hernia. Here are the inferior epigastrics here, and we're going to see a structure here, and I'm going to have the patient perform a Valsalva maneuver, and you'll see the intestines basically just bulge out in that area. So having the patient Valsalva, and right now we're seeing a big bulge of intestines. This is what a hernia looks like. Now, of course, you can also have the very classic, very far advanced hernia where you actually just see it in the scrotal sac. This right here is a testicle, and here you're seeing a bunch of peristalsing bowel just hanging out in the scrotum with this testicle. That also is an inguinal hernia. This is an example of a femoral hernia. Notice the curvilinear sector here. We have the femoral vein right here, and you can see that there is a little chunk of kind of collapsed intestine right here. It actually starts down here and kind of goes up into this area over here. And this patient had this out. It was reducible, but you can see it even without any special maneuvers right here. Little chunk of intestine right here, right next to those femoral vessels. Here's another example of a femoral hernia. We have our femoral vein right there. And as the patient Valsalva's, you can see that chunk of bowel just kind of balloon, just blossom out next to that femoral vein over here. Right there is that nice big femoral hernia. The previous examples showed us a reducible hernia. Now here we have an incarcerated hernia. So this right here is an inguinal hernia. We can see this loop of bowel just kind of stuck in there. There's some fluid around it. And this fluid kind of around is a little suspicious, honestly, for a strangulated hernia. And if we would like to tell the difference between an incarcerated and a strangulated hernia, that really has to do with flow around it. So right here, we're seeing an inguinal hernia. We're seeing some peristalsis over here. This is kind of the neck of the hernia. Here's a hernia. And whenever we see fluid around it, we are quite concerned that it is actually strangulated. Um, this is the short axis view of the same one. Now, if we want to tell what we'll do is we'll throw color flow on there. And notice here I have power Doppler, which is good at detecting just subtle movements, but we don't see directionality basically with it. And we're seeing no flow anywhere around this, making this much more consistent with a strangulated hernia versus just a incarcerated hernia, which is stuck, but still has good blood flow. To recap, our landmarks are going to be our blood vessels, that's the inferior epigastrics and the femoral vein, and our inguinal ligaments. 
if we are unable to see it just with uh, nothing, just with the patient supine, we can have the patient perform a valve salva while we have the probe in the locations in which we suspect a hernia is present. And we can have the patient stand, which will uh, have gravity assist us with identifying it. And then remember to keep in mind that strangulation has diminished or no blood flow in the wall of the bowel. That's it for this five-minute Sono video. Please feel free to send us an email or a tweet. And don't forget to check out the website and or the YouTube for more amazing content.